Hi, I'm Dr. Todd Lizon from Light Integration and NIR Saunas. A couple of years ago, I shot a video on Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, and it's proven to be really popular. So a couple of weeks ago, I decided I wanted to do an update to that video because I do get requests for that on a fairly regular basis. And I started looking into the literature that's come out since that study was done in 2017, so over the last few years, because we're now into 2019, and I found some absolutely fascinating research that re-emphasized my belief that photobiomodulation will be a huge help with Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's into the future. Now, it was a coincidence that in the last week, a video came out onto Facebook, or at least I became aware of this video on Facebook, where the ABC here in Australia produced a video of a case study showing how the application of near-infrared lights was helping with this particular gentleman's Parkinson's situation. And it was interesting in the video that they noted that the doctor that he contacted, one of the main researchers here in Australia, said under no circumstances could he recommend this for this person because no clinical studies have been done. In other words, we don't really know the full effect yet. But enough research has been out there from animals and some, I'll show you clinical studies in a second, that it's one of those things where if a person decides that they want to do that, that's up to them. But I just want to make clear, under no circumstances am I advocating or giving any medical advice with Parkinson's. I'm simply sharing the information that's out there and updating you on exactly where it's at now in 2019. So with that all being said, what's new in the Parkinson's research area. Some fascinating stuff. And the first one is we now know that remote photobiomodulation works. What is remote photobiomodulation? That's where you apply the light to an area that's distant from the area you're treating. So usually you think with Parkinson's you treat the head. In this situation, it was a mouse study done in 2019. They applied the light to the abdomen and the flanks and what they did is they did that for a period of time and then they introduced a toxin that creates Parkinson's. And in the mice that were treated with the photobiomodulation, Parkinson's disease did not eventuate anywhere near the same as if they were not treated. I've got a video on photobiomodulation that you can take a look at here. Here's the link up on the screen through here. If you don't know much about remote photobiomodulation, you're really probably missing the boat because it's likely going to be the key way that photobiomodulation is proven to work in the future. It's not about just direct, that's important, but it's also this indirect or remote photobiomodulation. So we know that remote photobiomodulation is a huge thing and you can apply this in your day-to-day -day life if you are doing simply things like near-infrared saunas on a regular basis. You get full body photobiomodulation that in theory should then have an effect on the brain. Time will tell and more research obviously needs to be done. The second thing that's new with, with Parkinson's disease is we found out that photobiomodulation, again in mice, this is new research again, I think it's 2018, showed that photobiomodulation, again on the abdomen, increased the gut microbiome. And when I say increased the gut microbiome, what it did is it increased the good bacteria. Why am I talking about photobiomodulation increasing good bacteria when we're doing a video on Parkinson's? Well, it turns out that if people have Parkinson's, they also have an altered bio gut microbiome. We know that if you've got a bad microbiome, that impacts the brain health and vice versa. So if we can influence the microbiome with photobiomodulation through the abdomen, that in turn should have a positive effect on the Parkinson's disease, and that we know to be true. So there's some great research that's just brand new starting to look into this, again, just on mice, but if you are using photobiomodulation, why not get the benefits, perhaps, of this increased microbiome? The third up-to-date finding that I'd like to share about is human safety. Now, Photobiomodulation is well documented to have very, very few side effects, but we simply haven't done, until recently, long-term studies to, which show how does a person respond when you're using photobiomodulation for a year or two years. And some things have now become clear where there was a case study done of four patients. They were on the photobiomodulation, 
I think 12 to 14 months, something along those lines. There's another paper that I can share with you at the bottom through here that's new. It was a letter to the editor about a randomized controlled study into Parkinson's that showed that they were able to use photobiomodulation for a long period of time in humans with no side effects. And now they've done studies into primates, which again, I have the link below, where they were not able to find any problems with applying photobiomodulation to the brain in primates. So human safety appears to also be a really important development, but again, just to qualify it, it's not that I'm saying that we know for sure that it's safe, it's saying that it's looking like it's safe and more research will still need to be done. And the fourth factor is that in this new randomized control study that was done in Spain, they actually left the Parkinson's patients on their dopamine medication and still got benefits. Another of the, the four case studies that I mentioned previously, they also left their patients on the dopamine medication while applying the photobiomodulation and got a lot of positive benefits to tremor reduction, to gait, to the ability to get up and get moving. There was a lot of benefits. So what we're starting to find is that you can use photobiomodulation along with the dopamine medication, which would have been an issue for a lot of people because you would be asking the question, is it going to interact in a positive way or a negative way? Can I do the two together? It is looking like we will be able to use the two together so that people don't have to worry about that aspect through there. So with all of that being said, those are the newer developments that we know. We still don't know exactly the right dose. We don't know exactly the best place to apply it. We're still sorting out all these different things. If you have Parkinson's though, the question you'll be asking yourself is, what should I do? Now, the guy in the ABC video took it upon himself and he created his own little helmet and he started applying it a couple times a day and he's been getting great results. How would an average person be able to access near infrared lights and be able to perhaps use it on themselves? That's where there are devices available out there that people can purchase, such as this device here. This is a near infrared lamp. It's got two LED lights. Well, it's got 12 LED lights in it, but they're tuned to two different frequencies. One is tuned into red light, which you can clearly see in the video. That's 660 nanometers. And the other is a near infrared light tuned into 850 nanometers. We sell this unit because you can use this unit on anything for photobiomodulation. So if you've got shoulder pain, you could use it to treat the shoulder. If you've got depression, a lot of the research is showing you, and you can use it for depression. Even some of the new research is showing that you can use it for just increasing cognitive performance in normal people. They're applying the light to the head and they're finding that there can be increased cognition. Depression, anxiety, performance with sports, skin health, that's a huge thing to try to reduce wrinkles. But the point I'm making is if you have one of these lamps, it would be up to you, but you could use it on your head, just like they've done in these sort of case studies and some of the early research. And what it would appear that they're doing is they would shine it on the temples primarily for a period of time, and that would be up to you to sort of sort through what you would want to do. But you would just shine it on the temple here, possibly on the forehead and then on the other temple. And in the research in Spain, what they were doing is shining it on the temples for one minute on one side and then a minute here for a total of six minutes, and that was it. And they were getting some pretty good results in that randomized control study that I was sharing with you earlier. It's up to you to decide how you want to use the information that's out there. And I'm simply sharing it with you. But there are ways to get a hold of near infrared lights if you are looking for them. This is one way to go about doing it. If you're interested in these sorts of lights, you can jump onto our website. They're retail with shipping for $150. They're not overly expensive. And then you've got the light at home and you can use it for whatever happens. If you get an injury or a wound or whatever it is, you'll at least have access to the light to be able to speed up that healing. So there you go, that's my update on Parkinson's for 2019. I will be looking to do a couple of more updates, perhaps on Alzheimer's in the future. I always have more information on photobiomodulation. I try to publish a new video every couple of weeks or so. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you've got questions or comments, post them below. I'm more than happy to get back to as many as I can. So in the meantime, keep well.